Hi, I'm Chris Tackett with CoreLogic. What is spatial data infrastructure? A spatial data infrastructure, or SDI, is an infrastructure platform implementing a framework of spatial or geographic data, metadata, and compute, which are used in conjunction to maximize the insights gleaned from the use of spatial data. An SDI provides services to discover, decode, derive, distribute, and display spatial data. What are the components in a spatial data infrastructure? An SDI first and foremost includes a spatial data repository. This repository can be in the form of a database management system, a data warehouse, or a data lake. Additionally, an SDI provides a catalog service used to discover spatial data sets, their attributes, and metadata regarding those attributes. It also includes a platform providing the compute necessary to consume, correlate, compare, and contrast various forms of spatial data. Further, an SDI includes capabilities to translate from one or more storage formats to others. Lastly, an SDI includes the services necessary to distribute data. Though not a requirement, often an SDI will include one or more tools to visualize spatial data. Popular examples are Esri ArcGIS, Apple Maps, Google Maps, QGIS Desktop, Mapbox, and Cardo. Who is creating spatial data infrastructures? Sovereign states are developing SDIs. Examples include the United States National Spatial Data Infrastructure, the Infrastructura de Datos Espaciales de España, or the IDEE in Spain, the Dutch Geo Register in the Netherlands, and geodata.se in Sweden. International organizations such as the United Nations and the European Inspire Initiative are also creating their own SDIs. Further, companies are building SDIs. CoreLogic is developing a spatial data infrastructure as an ecosystem within our smart data platform. What spatial data are used with these infrastructures? Data in an SDI generally includes spatial data describing locations of where populations reside, where businesses have locations, terrain features such as elevation and foliage, travel networks, notably roads, riverways, and railroads, and terrestrial assets such as, in the case of telecom, where cell towers exist or fiber has been installed. In the case of municipalities, the locations of all fire hydrants, where the sewer lines run, or easement placement. Included with each of these data are contextual information such as demographics, which are attributes about individuals, examples being height, age, or income. Firmographics, which are like demographics, but for businesses, such as company size, revenue, or employee count. Real estate attributes, which are attributes about properties such as address, lot size, or ownership. Capacities and volume statistics, which are attributes concerning how something is performing or its capacity to perform in the future. As an example, how many kilowatts a solar array is producing and how many it could produce in ideal conditions. What are the different types of spatial data? From an encoding standpoint, there are various mechanisms to represent spatial data. Those include attribute data, such as latitude or longitude values, vector data, which is described mathematically as either a single latitude and longitude pair, which describe a single point, or a series of points that describe lines and or polygons. There's also raster data, which represents a geography as a grid with each cell introducing a number to indicate the representative value for that cell. What are the most common data formats? While there's no single universally used spatial data format, there are a handful of common formats. Those formats include Esri Shapefile, GeoDatabase, text-based GeoJSON and well-known text formats, Keyhole Markup Language, GeoPackage, GeoParquet, and Spatial Light. What are some other applications of spatial data beyond these infrastructures? 
First, there's mapping. This is visualizing geospatial data to allow humans to perceive potential relationships between features. Telematics, monitoring vehicles using GPS, and onboard diagnostics to plot asset movements. Routing, determining the most efficient route from an origination to a destination based on the mode of transport and the ground features in between. Nearest neighbors, identifying the closest points of interest to a point of origin, either directly, or as the crow flies, or with consideration of the ground features, routing. Visit attribution, identifying when a location was entered versus merely passing by. Trade area analysis, determining the total addressable market around a brick and mortar location and generative AI, providing accurate geospatial data for modeling services such as large language models, feature labeling, predictive geospatial infill, or segment anything models. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about how CoreLogic can help you in your spatial data journey, visit corelogic.com or check out the links in the description.